Hello again, this is Joe from the School of Christian Mysticism. Leading a, another contemplation and reflection. So let us dedicate this period of sacred practice in the name of the unity mother father the one being In the name of that unity present in all of us, the Christ within, without, in the name of the life of the unity in the world the Holy Spirit. So let us turn within now. And be aware of our breathing. Be aware of the Ruach, Ru, Ruha, that life, the spirit, the breath within us. This meditation is uh, continuing on the, the theme of in the beginning and comes from the um, prologue of the Gospel of John in the beginning was the word. And particularly the exchange between Jesus and the disciples recorded in the Gospel of Thomas, which is the disciples said to Jesus, speak to us about our end. In what way will it come? And Jesus said, have you found a beginning that you ask about the end? For in the place where the beginning is, the end will be also. Blessed is the one who stands in the beginning. That one will know the end and will not taste death. So in these meditations, we're exploring what this might mean to, to stand at the beginning. To stand at the beginning and live. To have an internal stance at the fountainhead of life within. 
and draw from this deep inner source of life, love and wisdom in the way that we live our lives. And in the last session, we began to explore the importance of the breath. It is the breath which created the world, the, the Holy Breath, the Holy Spirit, present at the beginning of the world breathed into the clay of Adam, who became living. And breathed into the disciples by Jesus at Pentecost, which is not so very far away now. On the 31st of May, when he said to them, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And we're continuing to explore at this particular time in, in our world when the balance of breath in the atmosphere is upset, is out of balance. And we have a situation of global warming. And at this time of the coronavirus, which affects our respiratory tracts, our respiration, and everything points to the importance of being conscious of the breath and breathing well. There is a story in the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel, which I remember from my school days. It is so striking and you might remember it too, which is the story of the Valley of Dry Bones. And you may remember that the prophet Ezekiel is being instructed by God. He's uh, spent many years with the uh, Jewish people who had been uh, living a, a disparate life and uh, not uh, obeying the commands of the divine. And uh, I, I find myself particularly that with these vivid stories from the Old Testament, it's, it's wonderful. And in, from the New Testament also, it's wonderful to, to 
to use these stories as symbolic of our inner process, of our own personal or collective inner process. So we might have that in mind as uh, I remind us of the story. So the people of, of Israel, and I'm using the term Israel and Jews and Jewish people a little bit loosely because uh, they were not at that time a, a unified people. So the, the, the people, the, the Jewish people had been disobeying the, the laws of God and had been living very loosely and very uh, transgressing the commands and uh, guidelines given to them for good and pure living. And God sent the prophet Ezekiel uh, to warn them. And there were very many years when the people were subject to uh, punishment by God. Uh, banishment punishment, and uh, having their comeuppance, we might say. And if we're thinking about this on an inner level, as symbolic of our inner self, then uh, it makes sense sometimes where are, we're, we're not, at peace, we're not in feeling a sense of unity. We're not really present or conscious. We're not standing at the beginning and living. We're not quite in ourselves. We're not quite at home in ourselves. And in such a state, I, I know myself, when I get in such a state, what I say and what I do is often not wise and causes difficulties for myself or for other people. And there are results, the difficulties which one might call, in a way, punishment, or in some other language we might call karma, consequences. So the, the book of Ezekiel, a, a lot of the book is, is about this, is about the consequences of not being present. in the book, in the story, at a, a point when a lot of uh, punishment has taken place, a lot of consequences have occurred, God whisks Ezekiel up and takes him to a valley of dry bones. It's in a vision. And he walks with Ezekiel around these bones, and there are a lot of them, and they're very dry, we're told. And God says to Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? And Ezekiel rather wisely says, you know whether they can live or not. And God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. And Ezekiel prophesies to all of these dry bones. And suddenly there's a noise, a great rattling, and the bones come together, bone to bone. And Ezekiel looks, and as the bones come together, he sees that sinews are growing on the bones, and then flesh over the sinews, and then skin. But they're like the dead bodies, and there is no breath in them, there's no life in them. And then God says to him, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And Ezekiel does this, and the breath comes into these bodies and they live and they stand up. And God explains to Ezekiel. These represent the whole house of Israel. The bones are dried up. The hope is lost. And they are cut off completely. And God says to Ezekiel, tell them, tell the people that I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves and bring you back to the land of Israel, back from banishment. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. I don't know about you, but it's a very vivid picture of the dry bones and how they are brought to life by the breath of, of, the, of the divine. And sometimes I feel like that too, if I'm not breathing well and consciously. It's as if my being is dry and parched and without life in it. And when I remember to breathe properly, consciously, to bring myself back into a present state, to return to stand at the beginning, then it's like that lovely feeling that one can get on a hot summer's day when you're thirsty and you take a, a glass of water or juice and you drink it down and there's that wonderful feeling of, of life returning. So we might realize with this imagery that we're parched for want of breath, for want of consciously breathing the spirit of God, life. So let us just come to presence now and be conscious of our breathing our breathing in and our breathing out. Like that glass of water on a hot summer's day. Like the breath of God 
enlivening our parched, dry bones. We may find that if we really concentrate on our exhalation and really empty the lungs, then the inhalation is fuller. Like drinking down that cool drink on that hot day. And as we breathe like this, consciously, finding ourselves more present, present to the holy, sacred life within us, we find ourselves gathered into that state of oneness. Our bodies and our minds are, are not quite so scattered as they were. And in the story of Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones, this is depicted in the following way. God says to Ezekiel, take two sticks and write on them. Write on the one stick for the tribe of Joseph and write on the other stick for the tribe of Judah. So on the one stick, the tribe of Judah, and on the one stick, the tribe of Joseph. And put the one stick on top of the other stick, so that they may be one in your hand. And say to the people, in the same way, I will take the people of Israel from the nations amongst which they have been uh, scattered, and I will gather them from every quarter and bring them to their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, and one king shall be over them. Never again shall they be divided.
And God says to Ezekiel, tell them that I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be ever an everlasting covenant. And I will bless them and multiply them. And I will send, set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So Ezekiel tells this to the people and shows them with the two sticks. And it is like this for us too, this image of bringing together these parts of ourselves into one. And in that state, there is peace, there is blessing, the peace and blessing of the divine and the dwelling place of the divine. The divine making his her sanctuary in us. And one king ruling over the Christ if you like, that image of the Christ that, that unity within us, that sacredness within us. There are some teachings on the breath in the Gospel of Philip. And the Gospel of Philip, if you, if you don't know it, is one of those uh, wonderful findings in which the scrolls that were discovered in the desert in Egypt in 1945 at Nag Hammadi, and also found there was the Gospel of Thomas, which is more familiar to us. And Philip was uh, one of the disciples, uh, as Thomas was. And John, for example. And from the Gospel of Philip, here are some teachings on, on the breath. And these are teachings of Jesus. Which Philip particularly and Philip's uh, particular school remember and wanted to record. And were considered so precious and that they were buried to keep them safe. Very early on in Christian history. 
And here are some things that Philip remembers Jesus saying about the breath. So it is with realized human beings who work with energies that obey them. They prepare all things to come into being. Thus, everything awakens and is redeemed, good and evil, right and left. The breath leads all things to their repose. It aligns the energies, the obedient, the wild and the solitary ones. It gathers them together so that they are no longer dispersed. So it is with realized human beings who work with energies that obey them. They prepare all things to come into being. Thus everything awakens and is redeemed, good and evil, right and left. The breath leads all things to their repose. It aligns the energies, the obedient, the wild and the solitary ones. It gathers them together so that they are no longer dispersed. So this seems to me to be a beautiful teaching on the breath and how working with the breath consciously, breathing consciously, can help to bring us to presence, to gather us together into that sense of unity within. Aligning of the parts of ourselves, the obedient, the wild, and the solitary parts, and leading all things to their repose, to a state of rest. Everything is awakened. Everything is redeemed, good and evil, right and left. And Philip records Jesus saying, before leaving this world, we must become human beings inhabited by the breath. Before leaving this world, we must become human beings inhabited by the breath. And there's something to me very poignant about that, that statement. The thought that we might leave the world never having breathed properly, never having truly become fully human even. Or he says, there is a race animated by the breath. These are the true human beings, the sons of man, the sons of the sun, 
And these true human beings are called to love in the world. We must become human beings inhabited by the breath, by the spirit. For when we are, we are called to love in the world. So let us work with that phrase for a short while now. We must become human beings inhabited by the breath. So as we breathe out, let us think human being. As we breathe out, let us think human being. And as we breathe in, let's think inhabited by the breath. And the breath is spelt with a capital B, the breath. So breathing out, think human being. And breathing in, think inhabited by the breath. So let's do this now and become human being called to love in the world. Continuing for a short while, breathing out human being. Breathing out thinking human being. That's you and that's me. And breathing in, inhabited by the breath, by the spirit, which gives life. Breathing out, human being. Breathing in, inhabited by the breath.
there is yet another race animated by the breath. These are the true human beings, the sons of man, the sons of the sun. These true human beings are called to love in the world. Before leaving the world, we must become human beings inhabited by the breath. Amen. May the blessings of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath, be with us all. Amen.